the Lord be with you. I'm Deacon Keith Fournier, and our first reading is taken from the letter to the Hebrews. Let us beware then, since the promise never lapses. None of you must think that he has come too late for the promise of entering his place of rest. We received the gospel exactly as they did, but hearing the message did them no good because they did not share the faith of those who did listen. We, however, who have faith, are entering a place of rest, as in the text, and then in my anger I swore that they would never enter my place of rest. Now God's work was all finished at the beginning of the world. As one text says, referring to the seventh day, and God rested on the seventh day after all the work he had been doing. And again, the passage above says, they will never reach my place of rest. Let us then press forward to enter this place of rest. Or some of you might copy this example of refusal to believe and be lost. And our response is taken from Psalm 78. What we have heard and know, what our ancestors have told us, we shall not conceal from their descendants, but will tell to a generation still to come. The praises of Yahweh, His power, the wonderful deeds He has done, so that a generation still to come might know it. Children yet to be born. They should be sure to tell their own children and should put their trust in God, never forgetting God's great deeds, always keeping His commands. And not like their ancestors, be a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation weak of purpose, their spirit fickle toward God. In a reading from the Holy Gospel, according to St. Mark, when Jesus returned to Capernaum some time later, word went round that he was in the house. And so many people collected that there was no room left, even in front of the door. He was preaching the word to them when some people came bringing him a paralytic, carried by four men. But as they could not get the man to him through the crowd, they stripped the roof over the place where Jesus was. And when they had made an opening, they lowered the stretcher on which the paralytic lay. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralytic, My child, your sins are forgiven. Now some scribes were sitting there, and they thought to themselves, how can this man talk like that? He is being blasphemous. Who but God can forgive sins? And at once, Jesus, inwardly aware that this is what they were thinking, said to them, Why do you have these thoughts in your hearts? Which of these is easier to say to the paralytic? Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, Get up, pick up your stretcher, and walk. But to prove to you that the Son of Man has authority to forgive sins on earth, he said to the paralytic, I order you, get up, pick up your stretcher, and go off home. And the man got up, and at once picked up his stretcher, and walked out in front of everyone so that they were all astonished and praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. The Gospel of the Lord.